What up, everybody? I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com, coming at you with another case of 2022 Topps Chrome Ben Baller. Ben Baller Baseball. Pick your team at number seven from jazbeescasebreaks.com. Another one loaded up in the store. If you miss out on your teams uh, this time, don't miss out next time. Get your teams before someone else does. All right, thanks, everyone. Wednesday the 22nd, pick your team seven. D-Lo with double last spot mojo. Braves and Mets. Thanks everyone for getting into this. I appreciate it. All right, and kick back and relax, settle in. It's a fresh case of Ben Baller. It's musician, music producer, golfer, jeweler to the stars, and athlete. LA guy from here. And he's got a Topps product. Ben Baller did the cards. All right, good luck, everybody. Now, autographs few and far between here. Only a few autos. No, not even that. Maybe one or one or two autos per case, if that. But the parallels are definitely what we are chasing here. Just the exclusive nature of the cards. We've been moving a ton of boxes of this on personal breaks. A lot of people coming into the shop buying boxes and packs of these as well. So it's been a hit. It's been pretty popular. I feel like 2022, maybe guys like Julio Rodriguez and Bobby Witt Jr. and Wander Franco being in the set, that obviously helps. But I feel like there's been more buzz and interest about Ben Baller cards this year than, than last year. I think I like the design better this year. Anyone have any uh, bold predictions on the baseball season? I feel like, and I think this is, I feel like there's always a, a team that didn't make the playoffs last year makes the playoff this year. You know what I mean? You know, like the Blue Jays didn't make the playoffs in 2021, even though they won 91 games. That was a tough division for them. They made the playoffs the next year. Maybe the Blue Jays don't count, but... Listen, I think the Orioles. They won 83 games last year. Just missed the playoffs. Or even a, even a wild card play in game. Missed the playoffs, but that's a team that can make the playoffs next year. It's a tough division, though. I feel like the White Sox are always a team that, that, sh that should be, look, looks better on paper. They could make the playoffs next year. I don't know, do, do the Rangers make the playoffs this year? They spent a ton two off seasons ago. Spent a ton last offseason, or I guess this current offseason. They won 68 games last year. Do they win more this year? Here's Ronald Acuna Jr. for Daniel and the Braves. Joe Musgrove to 25. Wander Franco, nice Wander Franco. 1987 design, 96 out of 99. Tampa Bay Rays, Tim Leahy. With the Rays. There you go, Tim. Chilos, I can't even watch baseball this season. Royals stuck behind Valley Sports and MLB Network no longer on YouTube TV. Well, good news, Gilo. 
<laughs> Bally Sports, the, uh, by the way, Joe Musgrove goes to Stephen Carney and the Padres. Bally Sports could go bankrupt soon, Gabe. Which may lift the local blackout rules that you would often get if you subscribe to MLB.tv. Then you might be able to watch with an MLB.tv subscription. There's Kyle Seeger to 50. That's for the Mariners. That'll be for D'Lo. Jose Abreu to 75. O'Neill Cruz die cut. Dilo saying, Dilo, Daniel, you may be lagging behind just a wee bit. Make sure you hit that, once you hear me say this, hit that live button. If you're at the current point of the stream. 55 out of 99, Jose Abreu for David and the White Sox. Yeah, they need to hurry up and go under. Yeah, that's why I, I'm, someone who has better knowledge of this, feel free to Piped up in the chat, but that—that's how I understand it, Gabe. Is that is that MLB.tv, which I hope T-Mobile does their free MLB.tv for the season thing this year because uh, I'm a T-Mobile subscriber. Um, but yeah, I think that's what's been holding them back. Like, because you know, if I have the subscription, and most people know this, if you have your subscription, Gilo's a Royals fan. So he's in Kansas City, and if he subscribes to MLB.tv, sure, he could see out-of-market games, right? But he can't watch his Royals unless he's out of town and wants, wants to watch the Royals. All right, so if he visits Jaspies here in L.A., and he's like, oh, yeah, I want to watch the Royals game, then he can fire up MLB.tv, and he could watch the Royals. But if he's back home, he can't. It's blacked out because of what they call RSN, Regional Sports Networks. And so, you know, so like Bally's has a number of teams. Bally's has the Angels here in Los Angeles. Well, they're in Anaheim, but they had, uh, the Angels are broadcast on Bally's. So, and the Los Angeles Kings and the LA Clippers. So a lot of those, a lot of Valley Sports Networks are probably in, I don't know. Uh, I think they're in a lot of regions. A dozen regions maybe, maybe a quarter, a third of the league, half the league maybe might be under some sort of Valleys. Because pretty much if you were a Fox Sports, if you like watch your baseball, if your local baseball team was on your local, your regional Fox Sports network, that all changed. They got bought up by, I think, Sinclair Media or something like that. Never heard of them but until until then. But Sinclair Media bought them. And I guess Bally's paid, paid to have their name all over it. Now apparently they're about to go bankrupt. There's Nolan Arenado to 75. You know, it could go to, it could go to, uh, could go back to the old school days, back to local networks. Yes, I told you there was no more Ben Baller to post that night after Pick Your Team 6. I did tell you that. Here's Bryson Stott, Rookie Auto. I specifically said, until we get more. 31 out of 50, Bryson Stott, Phillies, D'Lo. And then this morning we got more 
and Nick posted more on the site. Jazz Chisholm to 99. Jed Lowry to 75. You're not a rookie, Chad Daw. You know how this works. You know how this works. Lowry goes to the A's. That'll be for D'Lo. And Jazz Chisholm goes to uh, Chris Parent and the Marlins. You did not hear the until we got more. That, that, that sounds like uh, selective listening to me. Yeah, go back to the tape. We post a live stream, 69 out of 99. Another Jed Lowry. Go back to the tape. Live streams are posted. I'm always one to usually say, I'm always one to usually say, oh yeah, well, none to post tonight because I don't have any more to post. Until there's more, is usually my disclaimer. Here's Wander Franco for uh, Tim and the Tampa Bay Rays. Yeah, don't, don't, don't listen to what I say. Listen to what the website says. That was your first mistake. Paying attention to, uh, paying attention to what I have to say. Every once in a while, I'll I'll uh, I'll mistakenly call out a different name for for a hit, and then usually we'll get an angry email being like, "Joe said that hit goes to the Reds, but I have the Reds to so and somebody else, but I have the Reds," and then I'm just like, and then they're like, "Listen, they go by they go by the." They go by the sheet right here. Not They don't watch the video and then listen to what I say. What I say doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, see, you've learned your lesson on listening to people, Chad. Your first mistake, moving next door to Jimmy Connell. Second mistake, listening to him to get into this hobby. What a mistake. What a mistake. I mean, Chad, what would you be doing right now if, it, if you weren't watching Jassy's right now and buying into our break? Uh, something far more productive. You don't think you think they lost a lot of viewers with the with their YouTube? Wait, MLB's not on YouTube anymore. All right, yeah. And you'd probably be watching Seinfeld or something, or telling business how to spend their money. All right. You might be doing a little extra extra work. Outside of work and, you know. But instead, you're stuck with us. All right, there's Freddie Freeman. For the Braves, that's for Daniel to 99. And is this out of five? It is two out of five, Corbin Burns. That's for Robert Runkle and the Brew Crew. Nice. Robert, all aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo woo. That's true, it is the fun time of year. You know, someone yesterday, Chad, was asking, uh, was asking if there's a way to write off group breaking losses. And I told them, uh, I don't know, but I feel like 
Chad Da, numbers guy, might be able to figure out a way. Spencer Torkelson going to Detroit, mark the set. Brian Anderson to 75 for Chris Parent in Miami. It's Anthony Rendon to 99. Apparently he'll be healthy this year, allegedly. Angels, Tristan. Fernando Tatis, die cut. Wander Franco. If you said, yeah, it's that. That's what. That's what I kind of said too. I, I I didn't really know like the details, but I was like, yeah, if you were like if you if you created some sort of business like an LLC or something like that that was in the business of. Buying and selling cards, maybe somehow you can offset losses or something. But yeah, then there's business, and that opens up a whole, whole other can of worms. In spite of what people may think, we, we are an entertainment operation. <laughs> so what you're buying into is entertainment. As opposed to if you're a professional poker player. Or I think you can do something with your losses when you're working with federally regulated gaming boards and commissions and licensed businesses for that world. Right, I, would, I imagine it would be a hassle. You have to argue that, for, that what you're doing is a business and not a hobby and that, yeah, that's a tough hill to die on. Maybe not worth it. I guess ultimately, if you're worried about, you know, if, if you're at a point where you're worried about how to convert losses into tax write-offs is uh, maybe a sign that take a break from the breaking for, for a little bit. <laughs> Julio Rodriguez insert. I don't know if these are really worth anything, the inserts, but it's Julio Rodriguez, and I kind of like this uh, insert set. And this number, though, seven, 17 out of 50, that's even better. That actually might be worth something. The ride and low insert. Looks pretty baller. And we got an Otani one of one. Woo! Shohei Otani Super Fractor. Wow, Tristan bought the Angels straight up. And gets the 87, 1987 design one of one Super Fractor Shohei Otani. And all aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo -woo. Future Dodger? Maybe.
That is awesome. Congrats, Tristan. Thanks for getting those angels straight up. Oh, Mariner. That probably makes more sense than a lot of other teams that people have been throwing around. He's in West Coast somewhere. There's Chris Sale to 99. Now, Chad, I just saw I'm talking about, yeah, you have convos with your coworkers on how to lower your gains if you sell a certain card. Yeah, well, how, how do you... How do you, uh, how would you do that? Do you, do you have any advice for us? 28 out of 99, Josiah Gray. Nationals, Jackie with the Nats. Or the Mariners were his number two pick when he was first signing. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like everyone's going to, this summer, you know, aside, outside of just day-to-day -day baseball news, just the overarching news that's going to, permeate the baseball season is Shohei Otani, where does he go? <laughs> does he get traded will be the first one. And then if he doesn't get traded by the deadline, then it's will he pursue free agency? Where will he go? So everyone's going to dig up everything that they, that they heard. I heard that the Mariners were his number two pick when he was signing. I heard that, that, uh, that Seiya Suzuki is, uh, is, is recruiting Shohei Otani to go to the Cubs. I feel like, I feel like if you're, uh, I don't know, if you're, if you're looking, for, you know, imagine how many clicks that The Athletic or the ESPN are gonna generate if they just run an article with Shoei Otani and trade rumors. It's good for business, I guess. Uh, so the only advice, reasonable way Chad heard, is to create a spreadsheet to track my basis and all the breaks, right? His initial costs and the carts that came from that and then actually sell them at a loss, and I could use those losses to offset the gain. Wow, it's a huge pain to do that. Hmm. Do you think there'd be any legs, Chad Daw, for a business that would be able to track that for you? I, I don't know how they would do that, but. That would kind of be cool though, if there was someone who did that for you. Or if Jaspies could do that, you know, like, you know, <laughs> but then you'd have to sell it through us as well. Like if you, if we were like a, uh, yeah, that's a lot of data right? and might not even be worth it. But you know how, like, if you, like a, a brokerage will do that, right? And they'll be like, hey. Here's your 1099 for the securities that you bought and sold this year. Here are your short-term losses and gains. Here are your long-term losses and gains. And here's your tax documents. You will be taxed as such, dot, dot, dot. Although that might get people thinking, I really spent this much on breaks? <laughs> I might have to cut back. 93 out of 99. We'd rather not have you guys. <laughs> There's Aaron Judge to the Yankees, Daniel. And a Javier Baez to 15, Tigers. And Ben Baller, the man himself. This guy did this. There you go. 
Ben Baller, obviously not part of a baseball team, so that's going to be randomized to one person in the group. 21 out of 25, nice. So in case you were wondering, hey, who is this guy? Ben Baller gained acclaim in the music industry before becoming a master jeweler to the stars who crafted unique pieces for hip-hop artists and other celebrities. A sports card collector as a kid, the LA-based entrepreneur returned to the hobby by designing stunning tops cards for Project 2020 and Project 70. There you go. LA kid. Um, part of the Korean American community. A big golfer, yeah. He, he's, he, if you look on his social media, I think he's, he won a recent pro-am, I want to say. A good amateur golf, good athlete. I think that's where he gets his baller name, is I believe, did he play some collegiate basketball? Chris Jaspi, who's in the chat right now, maybe? Something like that. But a bit of an athlete as well. Julio Rodriguez, die cut red, one out of five. Wow. What a, so we got the, the man himself, Big Ben Baller. We got the one of one Shohei Otani. And now we got an out of five Julio Rodriguez die cut. D'Lo with the Mariners. All aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo woo! Hot case, that's right, Chad Daw. Feeling hot, hot, hot. This case on fire. These packs on fire. Feeling hot, hot, hot. It's Freddie Freeman. It's 99. Right. We're not even halfway through this case. It's Josiah Gray to 75. Joe Musgrove to 50. Delo, are you catch? Are you caught up? Are you at the live point of the stream? All right. Next up. Lesson learned, Chad. Don't don't listen to me. It's like when people are like, "Hey, hey, man, is this Kate? Is this break gonna fill tonight?" And I want to say, "Yeah, absolutely, totally." Every case, when, I, when asked, is going to fill tonight. I would never, ever say no. Yeah, but you're, you're, you're a veteran for the, of the group breaks, Chad. For the noobs, it's like, oh, yeah, awesome. I'll buy a spot. It's like, yeah, that's what I wanted you to do. I would never say no, because it just might fill tonight. I'd rather be on the positive side. I mean, that sounds better than, ah, uh, who knows? Probably not. But I guess buy a spot, and it'll just fill whenever. <laughs> that doesn't, doesn't inspire confidence.
All right, next one. Wait, really? Chad, your first ever break producing one of one with Jaspies? Did your first break really have a one of one? Here's Jorge Soler right here to 99 for the Braves. That's going to be for Daniel. Nico Horner, 39 out of 50. That's for the Cubs. That's for Daniel. D low. How low can you go? Datis Jr. 13 out of 75. Oh, you didn't get it, but you, you were in a break that had a one of one. Did that hook you? Did you were you like, hey, I think these one of ones could be could be that plentiful? It's for Steven and the Padres. Rookie C.D. Lamb from Prison, Black Fina, and Auto. Wow, that's a nice hit. Uh, there's a Jackson Reitz, 1 out of 75. Brewers, Robert, and the Brew Crew. Another show, Hiltani. 50 out of 90. You know what, Tristan? Now that you have that one of one, you may as well start. May as well start building a building the rainbow. That'd be a fun little little project. Right, we'll we'll start that for you right now. Okay, boom. You got the one of one and the out of ninety nine. There's Jose Ramirez to ninety nine. And Alec Bohm to twenty five and Julio Rodriguez. Yeah, Daniel's saying you got to put together that rainbow. I feel like we saw the we saw a base version of that. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. I'm not going to go through all those cards right now, but I feel like we found a base version of that too. Tristan is in New York. Yeah, he 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 is in New York. I'm trying to see what what region of New York he's in. I don't know where that is. Um, I guess Brooklyn. Somewhere north of north of Williamsburg. Stock your address. Oh, you're you're over there. Okay. Yeah, you guys could. You guys actually are not. I mean, it's over the river, but uh, <laughs> if you want to do that, that's what. Uh, I I went to New York as an adult for the first time, maybe five six 
five, four or five years ago, maybe five, six, six years ago, maybe a little bit more. But um, my buddy was getting married, so I, I, I took like a week out there in New York just to just to hang out a couple days beforehand and afterwards, and and um, and so we were we were out and about. We were he was living in in Brooklyn proper, I think. I don't know. My hotel was near where the Nets arena was. I think he let, lived not too far from there. And we were out in, where were we? We were in the Red Hook area of Brooklyn. And it was only like, I don't know, like midnight. Yeah, and, you know, we were enjoying adult beverages. It was only like midnight or something like that. And we were just like... And some people were like, oh, let's... uh." And we're like thinking, where should we go next? Should we stay in the area? Should we go go elsewhere? And they're like, where should we go next? We're, oh, let's go to this. And half the crew are like, let's go to Man. These are all New Yorkers, right? And I'm just like, okay, whatever. I'll just, I'll just go wherever my buddy's going. People are like, Some people wanted to go to Manhattan. And there was legitimately conversation of, there's no way I'm going across the river at this time of night. And I was like, what? Isn't that only like two miles away? And they're like, Joe, it's New York. Two miles away is like nothing in Los Angeles. Two miles in like New York is like, could be, could be in a whole other universe at that point. And I was like, all right, fine. But then it kind of reminded me of how like <laughs> in LA, there are people who live in West LA who won't go across the 405. There's no way we're going across the 405. Or vice versa. People in like Silver Lake or East LA or downtown LA are like, eh, we don't want to go past the 405. There's Luke Williams to 99. And very few people want to go over the hill into the valley. So if you live in like Sherman Oaks or Van Nuys or North Hollywood or something like that, People don't want to go over the hill. We got a green Spencer Torkelson, 89 out of 99. Tigers, Mark. Kyle Lewis, 10 out of 10. Nice for the Mariners. That will be for D'Lo and the M's. Yeah, you can attest to the fact, right? A party in Brooklyn is out of the question from Manhattan and vice versa. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like it's just too much. But like like actual mileage-wise, it's not it's that's it's not that bad, but it's just but relatively speaking, it is it is far. I got some Wanderers here for Tim in Tampa Bay. We got the base rookie. Got a CJ Abrams too for the Padres. That's for Steven. And the Wander Franco ride and low insert. Which I think will look really sharp. There's Chris Bryant to 50. Exactly, yeah. As the crow flies, it's not that much. But like I said, it's like a whole different universe. And have you, you haven't had a car since 2000. That's, what an odd feeling. There, you know, Southern California is, especially Los Angeles, where it's just so, we're so car brain. I wish public transportation was a bigger thing here. They're trying, though. I guess Olympics are coming here to town. They're trying to get all sorts of metro lines completed. That's right, Rex. We're wandering and wandering for wander. And I wonder, wonder who, 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 who wrote the book of love.
Now, Daniel, you're a you're a Philadelphia sports fan, though, right? How does um, how is it living in New York, being like an Eagles fan? My colleague Nick Jaspi grew up, uh, grew up, uh, spent a lot of time in New York, Westchester area, I want to say, for a bit. He was like, man, and he was he was an Eagles fan. He was like, man, New York Giants fans are so annoying, <laughs> so obnoxious. Gotcha. Grew up in South Jersey with a fan from Philly. Nice. You got shipment info for Flawless 18 and you didn't hit in that break. Maybe Nick finally signed to ship you a free box. Yeah, a box of rocks. Just a cardboard box of rocks from our big hit garden. Up, Joe Pizzle. Yeah, all aboard one of one, one of one rocks for Rex Pizzle. Uh, you sold out the Bowman Sapphire. Yeah, I could do Sapphire. That's not too crazy. That's like a 15. That's like, that's a really short break. I'll do it. In fact, that'll be perfect. I, I think we'll actually be, what time is it right now? This break's probably 20 more minutes. So that out, that'll actually be perfect timing. Because we'll probably end this around the 40 minute mark or the, maybe the 45 minute mark. Give or take, and then we'll, uh, and then that sapphire breaks only five boxes, and that'll bring us probably right to right to the end. Brandon Marsh to seventy-five. Bobby Witt will go to Mark. It's Kyle Schwarber to ninety-nine. Zach Granke to fifty. Stuart Fairchild to 75. Joe Pizzle, who's in the chat, is the Diamondbacks guy. Give us a scouting report on Stuart Fairchild. What's he about? He's supposed to be good. Should Daniel Lewis be excited about... He has the Diamondbacks. Should he be excited about that card? He's no longer with the Diamondbacks. Okay. Here's a Julio Rodriguez die cut. Alexander Wells to 15. Wells goes to the Orioles. That'll be for David. And the Julio Rodriguez die cut to go along with that out of five will go to Delo and the Mariners. Watching Paw Patrol and Weather Channel. What about what about uh, Aquanauts? Octonauts.
All right, another box. That's right, Rex. Yeah, you can be like the people selling beach sand that Brady walked on. Or like air from somewhere. Did something from something hit Texas from space? I don't know. I feel like I, I feel like more things hit hit places more than we think. I guess it usually will hit water. You know, people were selling jars of Splash Mountain water once they announced that Splash Mountain was going to be redesigned. I think the water will be the same though. It's still a water ride. Husky Dolphin says, when you first saw that, the bid for the sand was over $99,000. That's a non-paying bidder for sure, right? I thought you were talking about Julio Rodriguez's eyes for a second. D'Lo was like, on a scale of 1 to 10, how much do I love Julio's irises? And I was like... I've never really thought about Julio Rodriguez's eyes. I'm sure they're nice. <laughs> uh, Julio Urias is what is what Daniel meant. Um like a like a 9. I'm a big fan of Julio Urias. You know, I mean, he's like, maybe without, maybe with far less of the fanfare, but I mean, he's like, he's like second coming of Fernando. It's a, probably an unfair comparison considering how great Fernando is, but I mean, he's got, he's got Cy Young potential. There's Kyle Schwarber to 75. This could be the year. Kyle Schrober for Stephen Carney in Boston. Steven Strasburg to 25. Jeff McNeil to 99. Tim Anderson to 75. Another Julio Rodriguez, riding low insert. Yeah, you're getting Ranger Suarez vibes from Julio Rodriguez. I like Ranger Suarez. I had him on my fantasy team for a bit last year. Here's a Astros edition of Zach Granke to 10. That reminds me, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta start working on fantasy baseball stuff. I feel like a draft is around the corner. I'm getting emails from my from my league that I haven't looked at yet. I gotta get into baseball mode, fantasy baseball mode. There's Riley Adams, Jackie to 99. Juan Soto die cut. Three more boxes to go. Rex was reading that uh, I believe in 1813 there was a significant meteor shower where there were where there were an estimated 100,000 meteors an hour. They say the sky was nonstop meteors as much as half, as much as half of the flakes of a nice snowfall. Jeez. 
I would imagine that in 1813, there's also far less, there would be far less light pollution. So one wonders if that was a normal meteor shower. But nowadays, with all the light pollution that we have in the world, we just wouldn't see as much. Light pollution's a thing, ladies and gentlemen. There are some cities around the United States that are designated like dark sky cities. So they will, uh, they will do whatever they can to diminish uh, lights, not actually diminishing lights, but a lot of times lights point up, but they don't really illuminate anything, you know, and so that just creates a lot of unnecessary light pollution, or there aren't caps for other lights that, you know, you can still have proper amount of light, you can still keep your house safe, your property safe, you can just point those, point those lights down, baby. So I'll post on Instagram, how do I rank Tatis, Soto, J-Rod, and Acuna? Hmm. Without looking at, I mean, this is just without, you know, just strictly comparing numbers. I feel like I feel like I'd put Juan Soto at one. Acuna at two. Julio at three. Tatis at four. Julio might be higher if it weren't for the fact that, you know, let's see him do it for a few seasons, I, which I think he can, but... But but let's let's see him do it for a few seasons. I'd love to have him have another amazing season this year, if not a better season than than before. Let's string a few of those seasons together. There's Walker Bueller to ninety nine. That'll be for Daniel and the Dodgers. It's George Springer to seventy five. Here's Tyler Stevenson to 50. Speaking of Juan Soto, there he is right there. I, th I, th I think Juan Soto is really good. I mean, he's been doing it for a while. You may have proposed O'Neill Cruz over to T-Set 4 just because. Well, you know, if you start talking about availability, you know, then, then I think that's, that factors in. Right, forget off my lawn purposes. But like that that does factor in because you know Tatis Jr.'s style of play, especially I like his aggressive play in the infield, but sometimes unnecessarily aggressive. He's had the shoulder issues. You know, then here's Wander Franco die cut for Tim. Then he's you know He's riding motorcycles, breaking wrists in the off season. You know, come on. You know, then then you get hit with ah, oh, it was it was it was this ringworm cream. I didn't know. There he is, right there. I mean, when he's on, he's on. I mean, look at that. I mean, that's it's pretty good. But that's also once, right? I mean, his his career really hasn't hasn't really gotten going either.
<laughs> yeah, that exit velo, that cruise hit, wasn't it more than 119? Wasn't it like 121 miles per hour or something like that? I guess I'm also wondering what was the speed of the, what was the velocity of the pitch though? Was it like a hundred mile per hour pitch that he just squared up and just tagged? And that helped with the exit velo? Or is he, is he like, is he banging off speed pitches at, at 119 exit velo? That, I mean, if he's hitting off speed stuff like that, then that's, that's amazing. I feel like I really didn't hear much about him down the stretch. Maybe it's just because Pittsburgh was just kind of out of it and wasn't really paying attention. Now yeah, you hope he puts it together with Pittsburgh. Well, the Pirates have to show that uh, Pirates have to show that they are going to pay their stars. That might actually get some free agents in there, you know. But that ownership. Is I mean, they ne they haven't seemed like they've been willing to do anything. Ballpark's beautiful. It's certainly, a baseball team I want to visit. Pirates doing pirate things. Force you Pittsburgh owners to do something. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess fans could just start stop showing up. But until then, they're not going anywhere. Look, look at how valuable sports teams have gotten year after year. And it's a it's a private it's a private business, you know. It's a club. It's a club of thirty, only thirty people, or groups, own a baseball team. And you do nothing with that baseball team, and every year, team valuations go up. So if you're running it like a business, I know Otani wasn't an 80, no it wasn't. If you're running it like a business, what a great model. <laughs> you're telling me the product doesn't have to be good and people still show up to the stadium and buy tickets and concessions? Uh, Daniel with the Guriel Jr. Braves edition of Freddie Freeman going to Daniel and the Braves. Jose Barrios to 99. There's Julio Urias. There's Wander Franco. I can't remember who, but someone told me that the Pirates owners sell all of their big drafts and players so they can throw money into the Steelers? Are the Pirates aren't owned by the Steelers, though. So how does that work? Right, it's the it's yeah, it's Robert Nutting is is the owner of the uh, the Pirates. Where, how did he make his money, by the way? Former chairman of a resort, sold a resort for hundred eighteen million dollars. Maybe some newspapers as well. But there's Framil Reyes for Cleveland. 
It's for David. Corbin Burns and Shohei Otani, 31 out of 99. Oh yeah, you could probably you could probably create a long list of that. I feel like the Padres as well for a long time have given up a lot of players or traded a lot of players way too early. I mean, ever since like Ozzie Smith and Dave Winfield through, through plenty of others. Yeah, Garrett Cole, Glass, Austin Meadows. I feel like Austin, they traded away Austin Meadows. Wasn't he a pirate? And then he went to the Rays or something like that? And ended up being, you know, at least an everyday player. Yeah, poor A's, literally. They don't hold on to anybody either. I mean, even, even in the last five years, if they kept most of those players, think about that roster. The Matthews, Chapman, Matt Chapman and Olsen, they had those guys, among others. I think Ozzy Smith, I think Dave Winfield probably was the bigger, the biggest mistake. Bigger than Ozzy. No disrespect to Ozzy, but I'm... yeah, Phillies trading Sandberg. There's all those ones, right? The Red Sox trading the Babe. I think the Red Sox, in more recent memory. Who was the uh, who was the guy they traded to the Astros? Was it Berkman? Maybe. Is it Lance Berkman? Someone else that used to, that was in the Red Sox farm system, and they traded him for a bag of peanuts. And then Lance Berkman spent like the next twenty years. Jeff Bagwell, that's what it was. Right. Who spent? next 20 years or whatever for the same team and just banged out an amazing career. Last box. Starling Marte to 50. Mets, D'Lo. Aaron Ashby to th 25, Brew Crew. It'll be for Robert. Corbin Burns to 75. For the Dodgers, I think it would be uh, Pedro Martinez. They traded away Pedro to the, uh, to the Expos. They said he was too small. They already had his brother Ramon Mar uh, Martinez and he was also kind of a lanky dude, but he was a little bit taller, a little more meat on the bones. And, they were, and Pedro was even was smaller than that and skinnier at the time. And they were like, yeah, no way he can do 30 starts a year. Here's a green Wander Franco. They traded him for Delino de Shields and someone else, who's a fine second baseman. You know, it wasn't bad. That goes to Tim in the race.
There's Brandon Marsh to 50. But I would have rather had Pedro Martinez. The other one, the other big trade uh, that maybe wasn't as instantly, it was kind of bad. They traded um, Paul Canerco. They, they moved Paul Canerco to the Reds for, I think, closer Jeff Shaw. That was another Dodger move. That wasn't very good because, you know, Canerco ended up banging out like 400 home runs or something like that. There's Edward Cabrera, 75. Although, I think that he ended up doing most of his damage in the AL, though, I think with the White Sox. I think his fielding might have been an issue, so he might have been just a good AL guy anyway. So, anyway. All right. Recap will happen in a second. Ben Baller, we're going to randomize to one person in this break. So let's flip back to the list over here. Let's gather all the names, one through 30. New dice, new list. Name on top gets the Ben Baller autograph. He did this. He did this set after 11, six and a five, 11 times, and we'll do a recap. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And 11th and final time after 11. Drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. That's going to go to oof, Robert, very close. It's going to go to Daniel Lewis, D-Lo. With Big Ben Baller. Nice. 21 out of 25. Congrats. There you go. Nice break, ladies and gentlemen. We got another case in the store. Got some nice stuff, nice numbered cards, the Ben Baller autograph, the Bryson Stott auto, the Corbin Burns to five, the Julio Rodriguez to five, Otani, and the one of one Otani. Woo, you gotta make a rainbow, Tristan, with the Angels. I think there was a base version in there too. It's now your duty to do so. There you go, gang. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with us. And we'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.